stream. It's 11 o'clock here in Europe. My name is International Master William Pascal, and I'm here with my mascot, the panda. We've got a um, post-birthday stream. Five plus three. Five plus three casual, if you will, everybody. That's the time control for today's challenges. Keep it fast. Everybody's welcome to play. If you have an established account here on the chest, that is. Let's go get a victim from the community. Innocent victim. Community? No. Play. I wish they would change the menu so you could just like click one button and go to the lobby. It would be much easier that way. Maybe there's some command. Can I can I press like shift L and go to lobby? Some sort of keyboard shortcut? that I don't know about. All right, five plus zero, random random player. What are we gonna play, Astrobate? English defense. There it is, the, this is the English defense. It's not the Owen defense. True English defense. Proper. I got a new mask for my birthday, but I haven't even had time to take it out of the box yet. All right, D5. We discussed this move recently. I have the feeling. It's very strange. Knight F6, E5, Knight E4. Huh. Playing in game. It's about equal. If I take the other way, I don't really like my position that much. This way, it's not so bad. By the way, this guy's playing extremely well for 1600 so far. I would estimate. Nothing fancy, but. King E7 is a problem here. Don't want to do that. But it's not just the, the moves that are great by him, it's the speed at which he's playing, which is impressive. It's just instantaneous moves. It's, it's unbelievable. 1628, capable of playing instantaneous moves. Not at all imitate, you know, intimidated by playing someone 800 points higher rated, like most people. That is impressive. I'm intimidated by playing someone much higher rated, like most people. Our opponent is not. I usually rely on that. Now this move is finally what looks like a concrete mistake. Wow. I'm impressed though. Considering he spent almost no time on the game, he's only made one real mistake. Jim's here just for a few minutes. Jan Babaler is here first today. Actually, Astro Bay was first, but you're a close second. Astro Bates always first. It's pretty hard to beat him. Unless he's not here at all. All right. But I appreciate you guys coming to just to hang out, Jim. Thank you, man. Thanks for stopping by for my birthday. Donating a thousand bits. I wish you could be here more often, Mr. Jim. I ought to just trade bishop takes bishop takes e3. I should do it that way. That was a major inaccuracy. Although it wouldn't have solved all my problems, I guess. My structure is still kind of sketchy with that c pawn isolated.
This is a new account. No, he only plays Blitz, Blitz, Blitz. But it's funny because he plays the Blitz like it's Bullet. You ought to play Bullet, dude, because you're playing like it's Bullet already. You would do much better that way. You'd have much better results, Astrobate. Sixteen twenty-eight in the end game. Still not not a trivial end game. Sixteen twenty-eight. Jeez. I know this is somewhat materialistic. I'm a big believer in king position. We're going for a little a little walk. Look at that. Defensive move by the 1600. Nice. And I get mated almost here. Wow. I have to play C4. Oof. It's a good thing I have c4. Knight b1. I can't, but, but I can't help but suspect my opponent is a little stronger than his rating. I'm almost stuck here. Yeah, he's too good to be 1628. This is crazy. Alright, pawn takes. I want my king back in the game. I'd love to fix the structure, but I really need my king back in the game. Man, I wonder if this guy is going to hold this end game. I don't think I'm even winning this position. It's probably some sort of perverse draw. That's a perfect move. Now, a4. I don't think I can win this position. It doesn't seem like Wow. This is just a standard 1600. I don't think so. Something fishy about the strength of this player for his rating. It's like I'm winning for the first time in this game now. But his endgame play is not that of a beginner. He must be an old an old hand. The deceptive part is his speed. In addition to his endgame precision, he's still defending almost perfectly.
as a defense to that too. Imagine playing this guy in rated games. I would lose a lot of points. If I played like a hundred game match with this guy, I assume he would probably score something like 20% the way he played this game. He would take all sorts of rating points away from me. That's brutal. Um, way too strong for 1600, honestly. Okay, PSG Soccer Rook hasn't been here in a long time. Alpha, Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero. Fortunately, I'm not going to take challenges from new accounts. Um, you guys have to have an established account with 100 games. All right, PSG. Padre and Tony, thank you. I appreciate the birthday wishes even a day later. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, yesterday we had a good stream analyzing games. That was cool. You guys can always check out the replays on Twitch and I do upload them to YouTube. They stay on Twitch for a while, then they get deleted. But if you want to see an old episode, you can, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I appreciate if you guys just like and subscribe on the YouTube channel as well. I don't have a, I don't make a business out of the YouTube channel, but um, where's PSG Soccer Rook? But I wouldn't mind to grow our viewers on YouTube. All right, D5. Let's just play D4. I want to get my new mouse. Mouse for my birthday. Standard Logitech, but this this mouse I have is a couple years old. It's it's been acting pretty weird Playing another game who you mean PSG soccer rook he's here now so I'm playing Queens Gambit accepted reversed I think at the very minimum the bottom of my mouse I Don't know maybe it just has a lot of drag on it, but whenever I make vertical moves it takes like five minutes to drag a pawn from C2 to, to C4. It's like molasses, like my mouse is glued down or something. But laterally, it moves really fast. I've been asking on the stream if anybody, I mean, I don't understand why the drag on the bottom of my mouse would would make that much of a difference. Laterally, and, and I have serious problems moving the mouse when it's a vertical move. And simuls is particularly annoying when I'm trying to move like really fast. It takes forever to like pick up a piece and push it to like E4. As if my mouse animation was slowed down or something. This is possibly Black's most solid response to play the bishop back to E7. Most people try to play more aggressively. I'm actually a little surprised by Soccer Rook because he tends to be like, if anything, overly aggressive. I think this is considered by theory to be Black's very best option to play quietly with, with Bishop B7 and either B6 or A5. I mean, I rarely play this opening, but It's like a St. George or Polish. Just best moves by Soccer Rook. Queen A5, definitely better than Rook A5. 
pinning my knight so I can't play d4, or rather c4, knight takes c4. Black's completely equal here. I decided to take on, B, on a5 because if you push to b5, you end up with a big weak square on c5. That actually could be a problem anyway. Maybe I can give him my bishop. I don't know what I'm supposed to play there. C4 and take with the bishop. I was concerned with um, with C4, D C4, Bishop C4, Rook D8, but possibly this is a better move just to play C4 rather than Bishop D3. Yes, best move by Black. Another best move. I do have Knight B3 though here. If Knight C5, I should like equalize. I don't really want to give him my bishop. This should maintain the equal, posi equal position, I think. Though black has a stronger center, technically, with a pawn on d5. Interesting position. I don't really play the Queen's Gambit Accepted, but this was a favorite opening of Akiba Rubinstein. One of his many, one of his many, many systems that he played with the white pieces. Highly recommend you study the classics. Take care, Jim. Thank you for stopping by. Good things to say about it. Oh, your game? You didn't see... What? Jim, you weren't here? I totally forgot. Were you here yesterday? Look at this move. Bishop b5. You didn't actually tune in? It's a theme from yesterday. Mr. Coffee Arsenal game. Which was ironically also a Polish type set up because you donated Jim I was thinking you were there last night but you had donated off stream which I really appreciate man thank you for the birthday present offline white has no real advantage but nice positional game by, by soccer rook today so knight h7 feels like a waste of time. I just lost a piece. Okay. I just hallucinated. I'm just losing a piece here. It was more or less a perfect game by Black. No inaccuracies. Not a lot going on there. Against a player who's that strong tactically, I try not to make any sort of attempts at tactics. I played like literally. This knight, knight g5 is a mistake. So bishop b5, queen b5. He doesn't have, oh, I could have taken here. So h6 might have been a mistake. I missed this. Wow. I just didn't even consider it. Do I get a larger uh, share of the Twitch Prime subscription or the traditional one? Probably. The well, it's probably the same, but honestly, 
if if there's a difference, probably the traditional one is better. I don't pay that close attention to the details, but I think it'd be safer with the with the regular subscription. Um, but I appreciate it either way, and Tony. So I just forgot, like I'm losing a piece here. <laughs> All right. You see, I didn't really want to have happen was this, where I come back, he takes on d3, and then he gets a really strong knight on e4. I mean, of course, the position is still pretty much equal, but this is a really strong piece. So I thought by playing knight h7, it was just a strange hallucination. I actually looked at this. <laughs> like I looked at bishop d3 and just sort of forgot that I'm losing a piece here takes check difficult to explain that kind of tactical mistake but all right perfect game by black three inaccuracies nice job not really the the psg soccer rooks normal style he uh we don't know who he is but he normally plays really radically aggressive now he played like the most compact super tight conservative Steinitzian defense possible with black here. Watch this. The engine move is bishop e7. Most people would prefer to play something more aggressive like bishop b6 or bishop d6, I would think. Most human players. But I've looked at this before and I had a game with someone. I mean, bishop e7, you know, it seems it seems passive. Someone played bishop f6 there. That's a stupid move, honestly. Maybe it's not that bad. Here. Now a5 is a strong move. a5 or b6, they're both good. I think I did knight g5 against, against another guy in a very similar position in a tournament game. Your Twitch Prime freebie gets me a, a GM. Bag yourself a GM. Yeah, I already don't like White's position after A5. Everyone play B5 here. I thought Queen takes A5 was the best move. Plays perfectly this game. So what's your story, PSG Soccer Rook? Where are you from? Do you play in over the board tournaments you're a bit of an enigma all right guys let's get started with some more challenges if we're not going to get more challenges i'm going to play more of vicious 1600s for your entertainment for your entertainment. They gotta have a new terminology here than create something other than create a game. Gotta gotta phrase this so it sounds better. Find a game. Search for a game. Create a game. It's awkward. Awkward sounding. Three plus two Arenal. <laughs> it's related to Arsenal, but he forgot the S. Asterbay with 7 plus 3. Asterbay, you know the rules. You're supposed to play me 5 plus 3. It's Friday. But because I have no challenges, I'm going to accept this. Asterbay doesn't like to play 5 3. It makes him nervous. So, but the normal rules is I'm playing only 5 plus 3 to get more challenges. E4, E5. Exactly, Uber Driver. The normal move is... The normal move is is to push b5, it's more aggressive. Honestly, yeah, I mean, I think that black is okay in either case. I don't really, it feels like taking on a5 may be safer for black, for white in that case. But you're right, of course, the normal way to play it is to push. Okay. 
the Laffian Gambit. I told Asterby, I think, a while ago what he's supposed to do here. I'm not sure he faces this very often. That's correct. I think I showed him this once. I never remember Astrobate facing Glafian. Not sure if I played it against him or I just discussed it with him once. The critical variation in this line is is to play okay, Queen F6 is the main line. But when I play knight c6, the critical variation is to play queen h5 check, g6, knight takes g6, knight f6, and then um, and then queen h4 or queen h3, and black can decide whether he wants to sack an exchange or just be down a pawn. Padron Tony, subscribe to tier one. Thank you. Good to have you aboard. Wow, Astrobe, what happened? Knight c3. Alright, that is not a move I'm familiar with. It seems reasonable on the surface. Um, thank you for the subscription, man. I remember... I mean, what other move would I play here except for knight c3, actually, if you think about it? What other move is there, really? D3, D3, I suppose. So knight c3, bishop c5. Knight takes c6 is regarded as better for white, but not as critical as queen h5 check. So knight f3, f5, bishop c4. I don't know that too well, uber driver. Astrobate just played g3. Presumably he's like preemptively guarding against the threat of queen h4. He's not a player who fianchettos on the king side much, so surprised to see this move. Does he want to play bishop g2? Maybe it's okay. So if I play queen d4, he has queen e2. If I take on e4, we would have some issues. Not really a good move. <laughs> F takes e4, double question mark. Losing the game. There's a really weird idea I have here. It looks utterly unsound, but we'll see how it goes. All right, development is paramount. Guys, I'm supposed to be taking five plus three challenges. Uh-oh, he just played e5. Who asked me that looks dangerous, Holmes? You just come in and spend a while on g4. Yeah, but it doesn't help. Now, if queen d4, queen d4, bishop takes d4, knight d1, defends f2, and I would go up upon an endgame. But we can play bishop takes d4. I don't see a good move for, for him after that. There is no good move. But now what? It's all good. What's the best way to do this? I guess I like my I guess I like my bishops. In game two bishops. But my extra pawn is on the king side, so it's not that great. Gave you my bishop too. Another pawn up. I think I totally screwed this up. Acerbate, you're playing too fast, man. 
Bishop g2 and you're okay. After bishop g2, I might not be better at all. But after bishop c4, you can't get this pawn back. Maybe even bishop g4 is good. Probably not, though. This is a pivotal mistake. You know, you're lucky you're not lost there, actually. You're just trying to play too fast. Why Why do you need to play the whole game in one minute if you have seven minutes? I fail to understand. Um... Not a lot of choices here. If c5, rook d5. That's the problem. Big problem. I know, that's the point I don't understand either, Miss Coffee. How can you not like 5 plus 3 and then play the whole game in 30 seconds? That doesn't make sense, Acerbate. <laughs> doesn't make sense. You're playing bullet chess in a seven minute game. Imagine if he actually took his time. He, he like, he had equality probably there, even after misplaying the opening terribly. He's still okay. Oh my gosh. Maybe he feels bad he didn't challenge me to 5 plus 3, so he's trying to make up for it or something. I don't know. Merle Dixon, good morning. Your brother, Uber driver, here as well. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just play the rook end game. Too many pawns. Everything wins. You can have my e pawn. He's played the whole game in 30 seconds. Now he's down 5 to 2. 5 2 down in a rook end game. Sounds like a hockey score. It's actually high for a hockey score. Has to be, man. Look at this. At least I used my time, but I screwed this up terribly. I should never give up my bishop here. Question mark. Maybe f4 actually is interesting. See? I was right. A little bit of extra thought. Look at the difference. It's a completely different move I come up with. If you give me an extra 30 seconds. Bishop takes c3 was like question mark, giving away all my advantage. This is bishop g2. Problem is my king is not safe here in the center of the board. The computer has some funky variation with g6 and rook e8. So what is Uber Driver talking about? Queen G5? What are you talking about? You're talking about the, the Schleeman or something? No, but you're talking about Bishop C4? Oh, Bishop C4. On move three. Yeah, this this is is messy. I don't know about this man. I don't think the bishop c4 has a good track record. People are losing to Johnny Hector there. Um, okay, that looks like interesting, really interesting, something Bronstein would like. But yeah, I mean, all the books recommend knight takes e5. Actually, e takes f5 is probably a good move too. 
This is also good. Um, D4. But again, I don't think it's as good as knight takes e5. Knight takes e5 and e takes f5, I think, are the best moves. But as to be, like, let's see what happened. Knight c6, and you play knight... So queen h5 check, I'm telling you, for the second time, this is this is good for white. But just in case you want to be conservative, you can play this way. Knight c3 is okay, all right. And now bishop c5. And what's the best move for white? I was thinking d3. You need to get developed here. G3. G3, an interesting novelty, but you have no time for bishop g2, do you? Well, you can play bishop g2. Yeah, why don't you just continue normally? This is horrible. Losing immediately. It turns out that d4 is his only move. F4, oh my gosh. And bishop e3 was the best move. That's better better than anything else. And I couldn't really decide what to play here, but Peter likes bishop takes e3 better. This would have prevented him from castling. Yeah, I guess. This is this is better. So he can't castle queen side. Alright guys, that was fun. Hiroku and Unicorn. Unicorn. I'm, I'm been, I've been in Hungary too long already, like two months in Hungary. Two months in Hungary and I'm saying unicorn. That's just ridiculous. All right. Unicornio. See, there's a famous drink that we have here, a medicinal drink that's very traditional called unicorn. And when I saw unicorn, I instantly went to my Hungarian pronunciation. <laughs> Unicorn. So, my kids are trying to tell me improve my Hungarian. Hiroku. Where is everybody? Come on, these morning, these morning streams, we need more, more viewers. You guys gotta tell your kids to children and and grandmothers to tune in. You don't feel that bad? Yeah, you should feel bad because you played a seven minute game in 30 seconds. I think you should be hanging your head in shame and not taking advantage of the opportunity to play a good game with seven minutes on the clock. You should feel bad. If you use your time, you know, you don't have to feel bad, but I encourage you to feel bad for not using your time properly. Time is money, masturbate. So the yes. Now I want to play the winner, but he's not letting me. Hiroku is incredibly strong and fast, just like that guy I played in the first warm-up game. He's like 1622, but super fast and actually much better than his rating. Despite his bad score against me, check out his bullet rating. 1954 in bullet. It's a little surprising he doesn't have any points against me, and almost every game has been tough. Stage Fright. Claims Astrobate. Yeah, you're usually shy to challenge in the in the stream. You can make accounts for your cats. They need entertainment anyway, Mr. Coffee. Well, this makes sense. I had another game in this line while back I don't know much theory here just play by oh also um, Saeed had a game this line let's see g3 bishop a6 bishop h3 I'll end up losing a pawn if I do that A6, 
exacerbate disease. So queen takes e2, cd4, knight d4, knight d4, bishop d4. I'm always better here. A little bit, but it's not much. I really want to get, you could get one of those funny, one of those funny web pages that has like something for the cats to be entertained, Mr. Coffee. No, I think you should just like set up like Twitch parallel with another web page that just shows like a, a bouncing ball of yarn or something. All right, I want my bishop to go to the king's side. That's why I'm taking with the queen. I figure he'll just a trade. He'll just a trade. Oof. That is a positional. Very likely positional mistake. Bayonet attack. F5. Oof. Um, well, I'd like to play f5. I could just play g4. Now he's taking pressure off my center. This seems like a major mistake. By taking pressure off of d4, he just gives me a free hand here to do what I need to do. Whatever that may be. Yeah, I think just g4, honestly. No, g4, h5. Maybe has some some defensive plan here. Again, I'm I'm very much thinking about the keep of Rubinstein. So many times he talked about D4, D5 structures where this is this is a mistake. When I say talked about, I mean like with his play and and uh, not so many annotations by Rubinstein. Very like notes on games and he never wrote a chess book to my knowledge. Uber driver, the victor's pupils. <laughs> it says in the bishop c4, Latvian black wins if his king reaches a7. One makes, you know, it makes one think the victor's pupils just played the Latvian because he was Latvian, you know. That's my theory anyway. All right. This already is strategically lost for black. I thought the only chance there for black was to play g6. g6, and if g4, you can try h5. Then it's like a bayonet king's Indian. g takes h5, rook takes h5, bishop g4, followed by white attempting to play h4, h5. The question is, where does my king go? No, he just loses his central base of central pawn chain here. Maybe I can't take on d5, but I'm not sure. How old was Bobby Fischer when he lost to Victor's pupils? Was he like a kid or something? Or was he already an adult? Now we could just castle kingside. No need to castle queenside here. 
I'm pupils. I think I met him. I mean, he was like a average master. Um, I remember in the nineties at some point, but he obviously was past his prime by the time I met the guy. You, you might, you might know more than me, Uber driver. But I'm not one of those players who's committed like all of Bobby Fischer's games to memory. Um, I have memorable games, and uh, I've probably analyzed, you know, or played over like half of Fischer's games. But um, I was never like a devoted follower of Bobby Fischer. I'm too young, too young to be a Bobby Fischer clone. Back rank mate. I'm dropping, let's see, knight g5, knight d4, queen h5, whatever. All right, I've given away my big idea. Black's just lost here. He just dropped his e6 pawn. This is actually maybe the worst game Hikaru, Hikaru has played against me. This is like the first time Hiroku has ever like just lost. Actually, usually he plays the opening really well. This is, I think, the first time it was ever really bad. Usually his play is really tough, and then he maybe crumbles in a tense situation. But I'm curious about the opening. Because I don't know this line much. I played maybe once in a tournament game. B6. B6 seems reasonable to me. Turns out it's not played much. So it's too passive. Played by Hans Re. It's a semi-logical move to play bishop a6. I'm in good company. Sasha Kiran versus Cordova, 2017. I'll take white. Bishop a6. This is a TN. Yeah, there's no reason to trade here, I don't think. But maybe I should take back with the bishop. I seriously considered this. Yeah, here you have to take on d4. Try to simplify. You could trade a lot of pieces and, and make this um, a tactical position. This is what I would have played. White is just slightly better in an endgame. But it's not much. You know, it's really not that much for white. It would be a real technical grind to win this position. Fisher versus Alf Anderson. How many times could they have played? One time? I saw a strange... What was it today? Oh. Yesterday I saw a Hubner-Karpov game. And I was surprised... I was kind of surprised that then I looked in the chessgames.com or some database online, some online chess site, and I found that Hubner only played Karpov twice, which I thought was unbelievable. If you think about how strong Hubner was, and they're like kind of a similar generation, I was very surprised by that. All right, so Sparkle Horse versus Unicorn. Unicorn. Unicorn 9-9. Anonymous is here. Bring your friends. Guys, seriously, we only have 17 viewers. I think I think that's that's a mistake. For some reason, nobody's in these European morning streams. I can't imagine why. You're finally back. Coffee and Merlot. Ooh, that's interesting. An interesting breakfast. The Portuguese Gambit. I don't feel like going into that this morning. I guess Knight F3 is playable too. This is a simple way for white to have small edge, but it's not much. It's not a critical test of the Portuguese Gambit. Ah. 
actually, I mean, I'm almost certain that somehow white can get an advantage against that, but it's so insanely complicated that honestly, I never wanted to play it for either side. I don't play it with black or white, even though I played knight f6 Scandinavian a lot. The Portuguese gambit was always like too, a little too much, you know. You'd have to really do a lot of work to try to make that work. Work to make it work. <clears throat> White remains better as long as we have this strong pawn in the center. You upgraded your computer. What does that mean? I've got a new mouse. <laughs> I'm excited about my birthday mouse present. Now what? Knight c3 is okay too, but I think this is better. Fisher Anderson, 1970. Oh, I was going through. <laughs> yeah, that's when Larson, you know, in the 60s, in, in the 60s to early 70s, right? That's true, Padron. Everybody's going crazy for Christmas. I haven't done my Christmas shopping yet. I'm going to do it this weekend. Um, that's true. It is the Christmas season. So we've got D5. Black's going to have to sacrifice a pawn. Two euros. Thousand. Um, right here. I'm going to quote you guys from Andras Dorian. Dorian's funny. The Larson opening, 1b3. Although there had been sample games before the Danish Grandmaster was even a twinkle in his father's eye, it was he who made it kind of popular in the 60s and 70s. Um... Then the, the attraction of the novelty of 1b3 faded out. And 1b3 became a rare bird at serious tournaments. It happened for good reason. We can recommend our readers two good lines against this opening. We hope that everybody can find at least one to his or her liking. Black has two possible continuations after b3, e5, bishop b2, knight c6, e3. One way of development is as follows. The other line is 5f6, so, but Adorian is very opinionated, but usually right about stuff. But I think that b3, I mean, b3 is one of the openings. He doesn't trash quite as bad as, as other stuff. Um, he thinks that that's the Hungarian Grandmaster Andras Adorian. Um, he's, he's an eccentric, but he's... He was pretty good. Extremely eccentric, dude. Now, bishop g5, knight g4. Why do I want to play bishop g5? Everything's good here. h3. Only 5 plus 3 today. No, Dorian just basically trashes all... Um, unorthodox openings. But he's right. I mean, b3 is, is not good. He makes fun of the grob opening really, really bad. And um, I agree, though. I think, like, the grob is, like, the worst opening ever, probably. It is kind of funny to read that, though. You guys have to hear the part about the grob. Wait. Where's the grob? Hello. Where are you, grob? So. Where did it go? Just a second. I'm coming. Man, where's the freaking index? Doesn't have a chapter index. Are you kidding me? 
All right, we'll find it after the game. The Grob. The Grob is great. It sounds like a Bill Cosby skit. I was joking about Grob earlier. Months ago, we had this grobbing good. But I was reading this last night, the Adorian book. It's called um, Black is Okay in Rare Openings. He had the whole Black is Okay series. Adorian's big philosophy was that he, he was trying to prove that the black is not worse than white. You know, kind of, he's a little insane. Slightly insane, but most geniuses are unbalanced. Black is okay in rare openings. But I just was thinking about it because I was reading it last night and Uber driver brought up B3. One of the less horrible, unusual openings. But a lot of people are under the impression that moves like, you know, B4 or OK or F4. Larson loved to play B3 and F4. But that doesn't make it good. You sent some money via PayPal. We're talking donations here. Oh no. Who is this Unicorn 99? Seriously? All right. That actually defends for black. So knight takes d6, queen takes h3. Um, I guess he's going to take back on d6. He won't play queen takes h3 immediately. And then black seems to have a reasonable game. That's very annoying. Arms on Twitch. Thank you for the donation. Wow. I wish I wasn't more distracted to thank you properly. Okay, then. I guess I have to play something like this. I'm not sure I like this though. Now he's threatening queen takes h3. Unicorn 99, we've played a lot of games against now. Oh, he's, wait, he's simultaneously, check this out. He's apparently simultaneously playing a 33, 34, three, three quarters game against a grandmaster in Horde. You're playing a simultaneous Horde game with a GM. Seriously? At the same time as playing me, a seven plus three. Okay, that's mental, dude. That's just this.
It's an equal pawn endgame. I thought I was up a pawn. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> Simultaneous horde game against GM. I gave it back with knight g3. You are correct. Yeah, well, it seemed like it was necessary. He's like a tactical genius. Psycho style. Now his choice is somewhat limited. I'm up a pawn. If knight e5, I just play rook takes b7. He gave it back now. Hopefully he's distracted by his, his horde game. Why did he challenge me to 7 plus 3? Guys, I'm supposed to be playing 5 plus 3. I knew this was a long game. Because usually on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm playing 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3. So he's used to those, those time controls. Tricked me. Astrobate did the same thing. You guys just have to follow the rules. It says clearly under the stream, <laughs> five plus three casual challenges in, bl in blight fluorescent green. The oh, channel points are a new feature, a new scheme for Twitch to attract and maintain market share. You almost went on time. That's the important thing that I try to teach everybody. That time is so important. It's it's just more important than anything else. No, I'm just kidding. The worst mistake I see among casual Blitz players is that they treat the clock as more important than the position. You have to make the position more important than the clock. And then the better you get, you know, at Blitz, I'm talking about specifically, incrementally, the better you get, Gradually you can you can learn to play faster and faster, but first priority is to is to play well. If you put the priority on time first, you'll never be a great blitz player. It has to be maintaining a good position first and then just learning to do it faster and faster gradually. Zen chess highlighted the message. Yay for channel points. Nice. All right, so I've seen through his devilish scheme. I can pin him with rook c1. He's too busy with his horde game to play close attention. Pay or play. Pay to play. Yep, and now I hide. Hide my king. It's a pity to have to go off to the side. We're winning in the night game. Knight in games are the most unforgiving of end games. Well, king and pawn. All right. But knight in games are basically glorified king and pawn in games. It is over. We're going to be up two pawns soon in a knight in game. Two connectors. Dominant king. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the critical moment was he had some counterplay and gave me the B pawn, the C pawn. He didn't want to defend passively there. It seemed.
he could have made the passive move rook to c8. I mean, it's always better to defend actively than passively, except when it's not. Remember, <laughs> active defense is preferable, but sometimes it's just not possible, if that makes any sense. No, there was no rook takes f3. His best line was like knight e5, rook takes b7, knight takes c4. If he takes on f3, I think he's lost because I have this crushing queenside majority. But if he had played knight e5, rook takes b7, knight takes c4, he would have just been like one pawn down in a rook, double rook, you know, knight end game or whatever. I mean, it could have been some sort of hope. So I'll show you what I thought was his best chance. Um, going back here, obviously he misplayed this part. He came back with a brilliant move, rook g6, which I missed. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Just move my king. But he has a little bit of an initiative, so I made the second best move. Okay, gave the pawn back, got my my pawn back then I get on the seventh for trading Queens and so here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about it's usually better to play actively if you can but sometimes there's no alternative he has no alternative to to defending the c7 pawn here passively it's not something you want to do but it's something you have to do he can't just give me a pawn because he wants to play actively if rook c8 is necessary then it's necessary you know so I think that's like the defining moment. And maybe he can save the game after rook c8. After this, still there's possible chance here. Um, wait, 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 wait. Okay, maybe this was the position we were talking about. Yeah, okay, knight e5, rook takes b7, knight takes c4. Black still has chances to survive, I think. But actually, I have b3. Let's see, b3, knight f3, rook f3, rook f3, g takes f3, rook takes f3, king g2, followed by rook takes b7. Should be. Oh, he has rook c3 there. Wow. He has rook, wow. He has rook c3 there. Or rook d3. Rook c2 check. King, king f3, rook takes a2. Apparently this pawn is, is winning in this endgame. I'm not sure I would have seen that far ahead. Yeah, I would I would have likely have not played b3 and gone to the endgame when they take c4. Baleful Zenchess Alms. Thank you guys. Alms particularly for your donation. Um, please support the stream, guys. Viewer numbers him down a little bit here for the holiday season. Baleful. But I want to keep it going. Rookie at a move 19 would have been okay for Black Threading to win the h3 pawn. I'm sorry I didn't notice that earlier, Zen Chess, when you commented. Um, I'm not sure. Which position that was okay black is okay in unusual openings the queen was defending after queen e6 queen was defending h3 rook e8 oh he's like hitting my queen no i haven't my mouse is one of the it's in one of those plastic containers that you need like a pair of scissors to open and uh, I can't find the scissors. <laughs> so we'll wait till after the stream. I was like desperately looking for a pair of scissors. Open it with my teeth. Baleful has his new computer. Better than a new mouse. But it won't make you play chess better. 
So what is wrong with one F four? F four. Um, let's see. B four is is dubious question mark exclamation point. F four. White loosens his king side with the first move. If he or she pushes the g pawn two squares forward in the second move, the h four square is inviting the black queen to give checkmate. The only thing that he says is that, like, the, the Larson, you know, the, the bird Larson is an interesting move. F4 and B3. He doesn't give F4, like, a dubious Uber driver. But he just kind of thinks all of these things are silly. All right, Baleful. This is not a new book. I mean, it's it's probably published in 2000. But Dorian is getting old now. He's an eccentric senior citizen. But he was a great player in his prime. Very influential. He was like the first, not the first, but he was the, the primary trainer of Leiko. Um, heavily influential on Leiko and a huge expert in the Grunfeld and uh, Sveshnikov. I mean, that's that's his biggest contribution to chess. Adorian was massively important in, in those two openings, developing the theory of the Grunfeld and the Sveshnikov for black. Absolutely critical openings. That's why Leiko played the Sveshnikov and the Grunfeld. The old Leiko, before he became passive. Normally I hate the exchange Slav, but I think it's like somewhat justified if you're going to play a Schlechter setup with G6. It's not much though. Very small advantage for white. But if anybody knows like, if anybody knows a good way to get an advantage against Schlechter, Schlechter, Slav, let me know. It's really tough against 4G6. It's a good choice for black, I think. Really not easy for white to get an edge. The downside of playing G6 in the slab is that it's relatively passive. But if you want something super solid, it's probably a very good choice. F4. It's funny, Uber Driver, I don't think I've ever played F4 in a tournament game. I always kind of dissed it. You know, I've actually never played the Dutch, although I was tempted to play the Dutch at one point. Somebody else played this against me very similarly. Yeah, I had a friend who got made it on purpose <laughs> with like F3 and G4. I guess he was like protesting or just mentally on tilt. He made it himself on purpose in a tournament, in a Grandmaster tournament, playing F3, E5, G4. Queen H4 mate. That's not a good sign of mental health. Um, see, this is what I'm talking about. Perfect opening. Black very solid here. Now, if white plays like bishop takes a6 at some point, I lose a piece to rook a8. Just keep that in mind. Trying to be fancy is not a good idea here. You don't do stuff like that, Asturbay. Losing on purpose? <laughs> Maybe if you felt sorry for your opponent. All right. 
now we're headed for knight b3. I never played a game like this before with white and the Schlechter Slav. This is pretty insipid. It looks like white has no advantage at all. He could even consider e5. No, I guess I just went upon there. Okay, you have to go back. There's no shame in retreat. It's just a temporary. Look, I retreated my knight. You can retreat your bishop. Nothing wrong with that. It's not shameful to retreat. Sometimes it's necessary. It's like my last opponent's refusal to play rook c8 to defend his c7 pawn. He doesn't do defense, you know. I don't ride the bus. But I think you have to do defense sometimes. You don't have to like it, but you have to accept that. You, you can't always move forward. Some players try to play like that. Like every move they make is forward and they refuse to go backward. I mean, it's like, see? See what I'm talking about? Bishop e5, bishop e5, knight e5, knight e4. I'm winning a pawn, but he has this trick at the end. So we start calculating now. Rook takes c6. Doesn't that win material? Rook takes c6. Rook takes c6, rook takes c6, bishop takes e5. Kusunum. Thank you. It was an ingenious idea. You know, I think he does have some stuff like bishop e5, knight e5, knight e4, pawn e4, queen e4, and possibly queen d2 at the end there. I'm not sure it would even be enough in that line. Uber driver, you don't always do defense. This is a nice compact two pieces for the rook. If he tries to put his rook on the seventh, I can just play like bishop c3. Here I didn't see anything. I, I could be wrong. Oh man, he has queen g5. That doesn't work. Yeah, he's just busto. Busto mania. Queen f6. He's down a piece. Instead of losing two pieces for the rook, he chose to lose a whole piece for nothing. Let's keep it simple. Actually, he has no, he has no moves. He's just down a whole piece for nothing. Can't even penetrate on the seventh. Refusal to go backward. It's like a chess personality disorder. I talked about that. Krogius defines um, obsession with direct attack. This is kind of closely related. Inability to, I don't do defense. The I don't do defense disorder. No, I mean, all he has to do is play bishop f5. And I thought black's fully equal. White might have like a point one advantage in in the final position, honestly. If he plays bishop f five after ninety two, that would be the maximum. And now what? And now what? He's going to play queen f4. Queen f4. Who cares? Yeah, this is evil. Bad bishop. Yes. Queen g3. 
Queen g3, queen f2. All right. Now I want to see if you play the right move, the normal move here, without being fancy. Right? Does white have any advantage? I said it was point 0.1. Stockfish, as usual, is like exaggerating its evaluation, saying that white is point 0.4 better after bishop f5. I'm not playing g4. I would have played like knight b3 or something. Yeah, I mean, it's a totally okay position for black. That's what you get when you play, when you play the Schlechter Slav. Slightly passive, but solid. Actually, now it's saying equal if I had played queen of knight b3. Zen chess, five plus three. All right, tough player, Mr. Zen chess. Zen chess, any tournaments on the horizon over the board games or the like? Oh, he's playing the, the Grand Prix attack. Um. What am I going to play against e4? Let's try the modern. Played a modern in a while. Yeah, it's important to get good rest. Especially when you're 39. <laughs> you're not 39. But I am. I have another student that has serious sleep problems. Who I've been teaching for a long time. And um, it's very much affected his results. Like sleep disorder. Yeah, it's no joke. Even when you're young, I mean, you can kind of adapt if you're 18 or 20, 25 maybe, but beyond that, Uber driver, you have a dangerous obsession with that Bishop C4 against the Latvian. What is that? Is that something like Lasker played? Who who introduced Bishop C4 against the Lafayette? Speaking of Bishop C4, Santa sent you an email. Nice. Well, I think there's something more fun. E4, E5, Bishop C4, F5. <laughs> That's even more fun. You could play F5 against the Bishop's opening. Steinitz played that. Um, I think I played that on the stream on a weird Wednesday. There's even more, more different possibilities. The earlier the F5, the better. Okay, Zen Chess, Bishop C4, some sort of Danny Kopeck. Dr. Danny Kopeck. Bill Kelleher also played this, I think. I remember some games in New England. Ivanov having some scary games against Kopeck. I don't think a4 is normal. Isn't like queen f3 a line? I remember seeing Kelleher play Feugel, and uh, these are New England players. I'm talking about strong New England players. There's something like queen f3. Isn't queen f3 e6 a line? I mean, a4 is clearly, it's a reasonable move, but probably not critical. You did make me play c6. I didn't really want to play c6, to be honest. The monkey's bomb. <laughs> Sounds like something Jack Young made up. I've heard of that. Bozo's Chess Emporium. The monkey's uncle. 
All right, so what happens if d5? It's starting to look like... Uh, Zen Chess is, is getting into his... He's getting into his Simon... He's getting his Simon Williams on here. It's some sort of like hybrid between the... the um, yeah, this is... You should subscribe to Bozo's Chess Emporium Zen Chess. It's... Um, Brian Wall. Do not confuse the walls. Isn't Bill Wall from... I think I did a chess commentary session with Bill Wall once. Just Tim Wall, Bill Wall, Brian Wall. Too many walls. Brain Wall. It's, it's reminding me of the... What is it? Bishop c4 against the Karo Khan. The hillbilly attack. Zen Chess is combining the London system, the hillbilly attack, and the monkey's bone, all into one opening. I'm surprised he hasn't played bishop f4 yet. Just unprovoked. The, the question. What about this bishop? Is it strong? Is it weak? Is it rich? Is it poor? I know the rest of my pieces have very con convincing futures. The bishop on c8. Zen chess. I think you have, I would say you have two good moves in this position. If you can send a challenge while watching, oh, there's some sort of reason you can't. Percy Hepworth, you send a challenge. Timor, 89, and Percy Hepworth, very well. We're streaming till 1.30. It seems like we've been streaming forever, but it's only an hour and a half today. H3 was one of the moves I classified as a good move, but maybe I was wrong. I've been known to be wrong. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts about h3. He feared bishop g4. Now his king shall pay the price. Oh, yeah, okay. Castle, queenside. Here's Johnny. Um, no. Alright, so you're never going to castle kingside. And castling queenside is radically dangerous for white. So I think his days should be numbered if we play actively enough here. Your days shall be numbered. Even c5 is coming into consideration the Simon Williams London by transposition okay 94 maybe how about that I hate it's a pity to like trade his his night off it's not Do 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 do. Oh, don't. There's nothing here. Just don't. Don't mind me. I'm not threatening anything. Redeem highlight message for 380. Acerbate brilliancy. Thanks. What is it? What's the brilliancy? Not really any particular brilliancy. Just a general conception. He's trying to castle kingside quick. 
before he has a chance to escape. Gotta kill him immediately. In 97. Ninety-seven feels a little bit slow. It's certainly a good move. We have ideas. C five is very strong. Possibly E five. If I play E five, he might have some sort of trick to save himself. Like E five, knight takes E five. F six, knight takes C six. Probably that wouldn't work though. So e5, pawn takes pawn. Then d4. Or maybe just knight takes e5. F6. F6 is clearly strong and solid. Oh, he's got a check. Clearly not happening. Yeah, that was weird, man. Good game. <laughs> I wonder if F6, whatever, you know, E5 was the best move. I looked at C5, but yeah, that was the point. Like, there was nothing convincing. You do something like C3. So E5... I didn't have time left. I had 24 seconds now. I found the best move according to the engine. Knight takes e5. Now change its mind. But it's still, it's interesting. Knight e5. I thought you would play knight e5. And then f6. Or even bishop. I was actually going to play this. I didn't see f4. 
Wow, F4 would have saved you. That's why I have to play F6 first. And what happens if knight takes C6? I wasn't sure about this. This endgame. This is what I anticipated. But it's not that clear. I mean, I'm down a pawn temporarily. All right, Sanchez, thank you for the game. Timor. Percy Hepworth is back. It's good you can join us and play, Percy. Long time no see. I mean, over the board, I should say. Though you visit the stream, you rarely have time to play. The English opening. It's not a bad move. All right, c4, e5. Let's play the, the Rachmanov variation. Not great, but it's kind of fun. Like a reverse Nimzovich. <laughs> if I played Simon Williams' as rep, I'd have sleepless nights. <laughs> I feel like his setup, like bishop c4 and a4, feels like to me, Zenchest, the sort of apples and oranges. If you play, um, you know, there are other variations where a4 is very normal, but honestly, I think in that system, bishop c4 is like a very, very overtly aggressive system. It's supposed to be played sort of all or nothing style. So I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical about a4. Because it feels like you're playing all or nothing. Then you're like, no, 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 I changed my mind. I'm just going to play kind of a little bit aggressive. You know, I mean, yeah, it, it's probably a playable move. But you're really, I think, supposed to play queen f3. I saw some crazy games. It gets really insane. But I have no knowledge of the theory myself. So Timor eight nine. Traditional theory is like Bishop G five, but I don't like it that much. There's a famous game where Botvinnik beat. I think it was Floor. Was it Botvinnik Floor? Or was it someone else? I think Botvinnik actually won against Floor with Bishop G five, but. Subsequently, I've played some games in that line. I've never had a very good score. Um, this is an unusual move, d6. I've had people like try to steal my pawn, knight e5. But I guess there's nothing wrong with d6. Now you lose a piece, or do you? <laughs> he doesn't actually lose a piece, he'll have c5. But I think his position will get kind of wrecked. Queen a4 check, bishop d7, queen takes b4, c5. Queen takes b7, cd4, knight b5. And this must be the best move. This much I'm sure about. The question is what to do subsequently. He could also play c6, but doesn't seem sensible. Queen d7, or maybe even queen d7. Queen d7, queen b4, c5. It seems like the least logical move. He'll still get his piece back, but this way he gets no, he gets no development with the deal. Um, so the question becomes, queen a4 check wins a piece. Oh, sorry for lying. It may not win a piece, let's see. We've got, 
Now he takes d6 check. A6, knight d6 check, and knight takes b7. Yeah, we're like winning a piece. Maybe there's still some complication. King f8, knight takes b7, queen e7, threatening knight d3 check or something. I mean, at the very least, I'm up two pawns. No, it's just one. It'll be two soon. Okay, if king f8, I just play queen somewhere, I'm up a piece. He's got to play king e7, actually. He's got to play king e7, then I have knight takes b7. Oof. Yeah. Maybe he can trap my knight. Unlikely. Looks like he's just losing a piece. Ludwig, welcome. Good to see all my friends. Happy holidays in advance. And thank you guys for continued support of the stream. This week, I'd like to thank especially Jim, Merle Dixon, WJ Loof, Mr. Coffee, Uber Driver, Asturbate, Oms, HTFP, OK Tested, along with Mad Queen Dog. Mad Queen Dog. There was another gift. Gifter. Gift, grift, grift, gifter. Top gifters. HTFP yesterday. Thank you guys. So, yeah, Black just lost the way. Mate. Rook D1 mate. Hard to do without a bishop. Now I take C4. Just down a piece. This is um, an interesting line that was, it's really been overlooked by theory until probably recently. It's very possible like G3 is like white's best move in this position. For some reason it was really not played much. Um, I mean, the only move that's really been played a lot in this position is, is Bishop G5. Okay, Percy. I lost with Bishop G5 in a game in the Hungarian Team Championship to Pataki Joza once. Very horribly gone wrong. The last time I played that. All right, C4. Let's play classical English. I played this move a lot with white. Knight f3. I was just speaking about this book I have by Andres Shadorian, Black is Okay and Unusual Openings. And he, he actually endorses um, some really extreme stuff against like g3. He would probably consider this viable. H5 was played a couple of years ago in the World Junior Championship by Moksudlu, the first round of World Junior Championship that he won. Um, and also by the interesting player Alexander Indich in a tournament where I was, was playing a couple of years ago. It's not as crazy as it looks. I think it's sort of justified. But you have to follow up very, very aggressively to make this type of thing. Fly. I think there's a case to be made that Bishop, I'm sorry, Knight F3 is the best move here against um, G3 H5, but I've seen players react in all different ways. I've seen H4, I've seen H3, I've seen people just let people play H4. But Knight F3 seems to be logical. If e4 black can overextend himself. I mean, I wonder if I'm threatening h4. 
I don't think I can do it without really like losing a pawn. Knight h4. Rook h4. G takes h4. Now we're like being like Simon Williams. I'm turning into Simon Williams. Help. No, um, a3. Very well. I guess it's better to turn into Simon Williams than find gold. If you had a choice, who would you rather turn into? The English players typically like it nice and calm and safe, and, and I've played the English a lot myself. I mean, I know their mentality. I don't mean English chess players. I mean people who play the English opening, for those of you who aren't paying attention. Um, they like sort of stable type of positions. They don't like when it's like totally irrational and crazy. They wouldn't play the English opening if they liked irrational, crazy positions. That's why I think something like this is a, is a good try. Um, now what? However, I don't really like knight g6. I know this looks kind of weird. There's a method to my madness. Spassky would approve. I'm not sure, but this does kind of kill his bishop on b2, and I really don't want to see bishop b6, knight g5. And it gives me Maybe g5, h4, just primitive style attacking play. So with various ideas with f6. Quite the odd close Sicilian here. What would Mook Sudlu do? Maybe I should get my rook off this this line with rook b8. Useful. A very useful defensive move, rook b8. I judge it unnecessary because he has a knight in f3. It's not like he has like e3, knight e2, and the bishop's diagonal is open. Bishop g4 induces some weaknesses in his position. That's my idea with that. In fact, I could just... Consider d5 straight up here. But I'm opting for development instead. Magnus, it's your turn. Magnus plays the English. He likes to play knight on f3 against his closed setup. Magnus plays everything. What's a Bronstein bishop? Please clarify. Bronstein would appreciate this. Open-minded player, creative thinker. Hey, keep all the pieces on the board. If you want to play for a win, 
the pocket bishop. Ooh, now he's threatening d4. Controversial play on the queen side. No, I think b5 is good. He's got things to think about now, how he wants to do this. Not an orthodox English opening. Guys, we have another half an hour for the stream, a couple more games, so if somebody would like to challenge us, I'm playing five plus three casual. We have time for at least two more games. Just in case. Just in case the c7 pawn comes under attack. Hey, maybe queen c2 was a good move. Um, but I don't think you should play d4. Just did it. Now it's... Hmm... Shades of Zen chess. Would you would you like your king in the center? Or would you like to go castling today? Maybe Oh no, you have that move? <laughs> How can I not see that? Oh my god. That almost wins by force. Wow, it just completely eluded me. Knight d2. Wow, lucky that doesn't win for white. Wow. You're going to have to go berserk now. Far less clear than I thought. Knight d2 is a strong move. Radical change of position. Whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> oh my god. What is going on here? Um, it's an everyday, normal everyday position. Clearly, just a totally normal everyday position. Percy Hepworth. Actually, you don't play rated. Now Black's position has started to look a little bit dubious. My king is trapped in the center. Not your king. Well, nobody's trapped in the center, absolutely. Just calmly. Wow. What a game. I'm pretty freaked out at this point. What a game. Wait, it's just better now? Seriously? This is brilliant. I mean, knight d2. I practically forced him to do it, but my whole... My whole position started to just disintegrate before my eyes. 
What if you just trade queens there, dude? Wouldn't that be better? I think it would be best. If you had just traded queens, I'm almost lost in that end game. Now you're you're trading queens, but you're a tempo down on the previous line. Still, it seems fine for black. I'm down a pawn in an endgame. Percy Hepworth. Absolute genius. And you don't take? What? Panic mode. Okay, he just panicked in a winning position. Dude, this is a brilliancy. You're like winning. After 92, you're just winning. It's unbelievable. In one move. <laughs> I did not see 90, 92. Wow. It's really, you know, not hard to find this move. It's so natural. I don't understand how I can't see that. How I didn't see this move. I'm just lost after 92. What seemed like a really logical game. I mean, the whole game was interesting. D4's best move. I actually half expected him to play C5 here. You play like best moves every move. Now I don't know what to do. I mean, I can play this, but what's what's my next move? Even if he just played king takes e2. The white king is perfectly fine in the center. Very well judged by white. That was a good judgment call. This is a mistake, apparently. But I don't see the big deal. The engine says that I can play this. But why am I winning here? Oh, because of C3. And then I can play like queen b5 maybe. So that was a big, big mistake by me. I have to try to kill his bishop on b2. Because after this in endgame, it's, it's a horror show for black. I thought, oh, I'll have something with those pawns on c4 and d4 with this king in the center, but there's absolutely nothing for black. Nothing. Pawns on c4 and, and d4. I'm just busted here, completely overextended and lost. Yeah, that was impressive setup. All right, pi day's up. Five plus three casual, guys. we got time for two more games. Yeah, I don't know when the last time we played was. Percy. Been a long time. I think since we last played. Very long time, no? Um, we'll play E4. Because Pyde plays like the Slav, doesn't he? I hate that. 
Slav drives me nuts. Nidorf? I think he plays the Nidorf, right? You played two simul games recently? I forgot, really? My memory isn't what it used to be. All right. Yeah, we had a game against somebody a couple weeks ago who played bishop e6, and I got to play this novelty f4. I don't remember who that was against. It might have even been against Pi Day. Cannot recall. This must have been the game I won with black. Another game I won with black. He keeps getting checkmated by two connected pass pawns. All right, so here, a4, stopping b5. Hmm. a5 looks like a positional mistake. I wonder if he can play d5, despite it, despite it all. I'm just trying to control the d5 square. This is my main focus here. Focus group. I beat my English for fun over time. Well, I mean, h5 is hard to believe that Selecki's actually analyzed that. I mean, there's almost no practice to analyze, I would think. So bishop g5, what happens if knight takes e4? Could be a problem. Probably best to omit that here. Interesting that I played a4 and he played a5 immediately. I mean, h5 is really just experimental. I can't believe well, I mean, I guess if you recommend a repertoire with g3, you're going to have to cover it. Yeah, but I wouldn't think there's too much practice. It's borderline experimental. You know, it should should be okay for white if you play correctly. Actually, it looks like you did a pretty good job. Um, but I really have never like seriously studied that from Black's perspective. Okay, so now what? Can I take on e6? Should I take on e6? Perhaps. It's not that bad. Not that bad. Positive way of looking at things. We get to play a positional struggle with a tactical player. I mean, I don't think that Paide is bad strategically, but he's very quick and I think he likes tactics, so we do like a wrestling match rather than a boxing. Rather than boxing, something like sumo wrestling. To kind of close the position in the Nidorf, and the Nidorf player can't get the open game he likes. I'm trying to emulate a little bit the system that MVL used against Wei Yi. Rook A6 is just an incredibly creative idea.
The point is knight b5, queen c6. Awkward but true. Instantly. Wait, what about knight back to d2? No. Black's pieces are having a little bit of trouble sort of coordinating. Now I need a plan though. This rook a6 is, is perversely strong. I mean, how do you come up with that in that position where he played it? Who would even think of that move? He found that this this is going to defend his his d6 pawn and the whole thing will work. That's amazing. It's a crazy crazy plan. Whew. All right, so he doesn't have like a really great square. Now he hung a rook. Yes, rook c2 has to be played. Um, rook c2. Apparently he's equal. Yeah, I would have probably played like the engine suggested, bishop b4. I would expect rook takes b2. Something like this, bishop d6. But that seems to lose a piece. Sorry, how can I do bishop bishop d6 there? Anyway, this is an amazing move, rook a6. Damn. I like that a lot. Exploiting the fact that the knight on b8 doesn't really need to move yet and transferring over here. That was a really cool idea. The engine says he has d5. All right. So this was like the critical position and he blunders, but here I mean, I could try to keep my pawn, right? With something like b4. Well, I'm not up a pawn, it's equal pawns. He took on c2. Brilliant c from Masturbate. Yeah, I'm not sure what I would have done here. Knight takes b7, maybe that's the simplest. Take the pawn, take the pawn, take the pawn. Peter thinks that black is fine. Killed by bacon. I got killed by bacon last time. How was that again? Well, he's like 1600 and killed me in a five plus three game. Really? I think I vaguely remember now. 
Yeah, I hope I don't get killed by bacon again. What? What is that? Okay. Some kind of tricky gambit. It's uh like um Yeah, it's basically a Budapest gambit in a way, sort of inverted. Inverted Budapest gambit. I'm not in the mood for bacon. This looks like something my teammate Pro Rock Martin would play. He plays all kinds of insane gambits like this. It's ridiculous. I don't know how he can be like a FIDE master and play like that. He pulls it off though. All right. Bishop c4 e6 is obviously recommended. F6 not good there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this actually looks kind of fun for white, but now he has to be careful. Queen e2, b5. Objectively black should be. Objectively black should be fine. There's some tricks. That wasn't one of the tricks that I mentioned. <laughs> That's not the trick I was talking about. I was thinking like, if um, if you calmly retreat, if you if I take on d3, you might have queen f3 in some positions. This looks a little overambitious for white, but who knows? It reminds me of like a semi-slav. This is not good. This time, bacon. Bacon is killed by the people. Bacon is the victim. No need to be greedy. Take pawns on b2. One. Being victimized by bacon once is enough. Yeah. Trading queens is sealing his, his doom. job security for the knight on e4. I dare you to take en passant. He did it. Again, it reminds me of the semi-slav. <laughs> it's a good semi-slav up, up two pieces. I like it. All right, bacon is going down. I think his opening may not be that bad if if black makes an inaccuracy or two. We can look at it. Maybe that's some better way to play it. He obviously didn't have to sacrifice a piece. Now I want to see like if this has ever actually been played. Takes here. Modestino. Mr. Modestino. A not so modest opening. So, okay. What would Adorian say about this? Um, yeah, the computer likes knight d7. But check it out, like the engine is giving white point one. I mean, okay, you can't trust the engine too much. It might change. Its evaluation will like flip and stuff. But if white only has a point 0.1 negative, it's actually a playable line. I 
I played a novelty here, a6, preventing bishop b5. And I expected you to play a4, as the engine suggested. Now you just have to retreat. Wade has some compensation, it shouldn't really be enough. It's a fun opening, but it's not it's not really correct. Like my teammate basically relies on people doing stupid things. Gigi Helis, welcome. Okay, so last game for today, guys. I've gotta go. We'll be back on Sunday with a simul. Um I'm not gonna stream on Christmas Eve or Christmas this year, 24 and 25 December. I think I'm taking off, just so you guys know. Probably on New Year, I might have the day off. But Sunday will be here. Sunday the 22nd of December will be the next stream in two days. Yeah, Kill by Bacon is a funny name. I love that. Murdered by pork. Knight of three, d5, c4, e3. The Neo Slav. This is a good line. This is actually considered the professional move here. I've had a number of games in this. Hi, Nelzoli, two years ago. Queen C7 is um, losing a pawn. You're supposed to play Queen B6. Now the question becomes, is it losing a pawn or sacrificing a pawn? CD5 takes, 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 queen takes, e6, back to b3, something like knight to c6, d4. Yeah. I mean, if queen c7 was good, I guess more people would play it. I mean, sometimes you can just simply draw conclusions based on process of elimination. Process of elimination. If queen c7 was a good move, more people would play it. Therefore, we just have to figure out why it's not a good move. So I have bishop b5 check here. And I don't think that's a bad move, is it? You can't hurt to develop a piece. It hurts. It hurts. No. It could lose a tempo at some point in the future. back or queen c4 interesting try it's a weird place to put one's queen though so it's basically a sort of dubious pawn sacrifice black has a tiny bit of development but he's lost a very important pawn. It's not like he sacrificed his wing pawn or A or H pawn. It's it's his central pawn that he lost. I mean, that's massive importance to the game. That pawn. Very valuable pawn. This is... Vital. However, um... Now we're starting to wonder. Black has compensation. If bishop e2. All right, so we need to be careful now. Bishop d3, bishop d2. Bishop d3, bishop b4, check, bishop d2. Bishop d3, bishop b4, check, bishop d2. 
bishop d3, knight a5, queen d1. I believe I have to play this. Oof. Maybe not. Only stupid names is actually 2000 in classical. 1843 in rapid. Only lower in blitz. And chess 960. Yet I'm 32 and 1 against you. How do I have that good a score here? And I lose the exchange. Wow. Okay. We have to fight on. We must fight on. We have a pawn for it. We blunder. We have a pawn for it. And no one's immune from blundering. We lose an exchange, but uh, very, very uh, careful move order by stupid names left. He didn't exchange queens and then and knight c2. He quickly played the best there with the first preliminary move. Wow. That's interesting. I have to be very, very careful here. Fighting for a draw, basically. Wow. You're you're quite on fire today. I'm not happy here. It's not really like I like my last game to be like this for the day. I don't even know what I did wrong. I mean, what is this? You just sacrificed the pawn for nothing, and I'm lost in a matter of a couple moves. I had to just castle first. Seems like black has compensation. Now you're threatening knight b4 for real. I have to take on c6. Black has compensation. So you invented a new pawn sacrifice for black. King e7, best move. Knight a3, um, well, I don't think, you know, this... This is a clean win, but it's it's a win. I mean, it's it's a winning position. Yeah, it's all relative. This this should be winning for black as well. I mean, I think being up the exchange is is a win either way. But I agree that it's probably more accurate to do a knight takes a three.
Okay, guys, I gotta go after this game. Obviously, I've had enough for today. We have very little compensation, but if Black's technique is not good, we can survive. I mean, basically, I agree. It would have been better to take on A3. He also had B5, just winning probably immediately. If you just play B5 here, I think you just, you may even like not lose a piece. Even better. Clearly winning with B5. Do I have any sort of compensation? Pawn Islands. Who's talking about Pawn Islands? So F6 takes, takes, knight E4. He's gonna have a lot of Pawn Islands too. Played really well this game. Except for the fact that he didn't keep his extra piece. He still played well. Now it's getting messy. Is my knight as strong as a rook? But I don't really like winning from lost positions. I like to win, you know, correctly. Play correctly. Man, that's a good move too. best. I think he should have just played king d5 last move. Now I have the access to f4 without him being able to take it. Sneaky traps and cheap moves. Yeah, but this is the vital difference. I have multiple good moves here. Multiple good moves. Still, he's winning, probably. Not so easy now. I mean, I have a solid pawn for the exchange. Do I? Man, dude. Taking your vitamins. Now my mouse starts to kick in. Excellent defense by black. Wow. Mm. Mouse is really bad. Just got a new mouse. Haven't had time to even plug it in.
Yeah, he's getting kind of desperate now. We're actually winning. Man, that was... If you're a little faster, you could probably flag me. I can hardly move my mouse. Um, yeah, wow. So I'm just lost after 10 moves. Not the first time today. So I've never seen anyone do this. Just it apparently like just loses a pawn. I was talking about queen c4 and then changed my mind. Yeah, so at this point, d4 is like question mark. Wow. If I played d3, everything would have been all right. Little did I know. And now I realized if I trade on c6, he has such good white squares, he has full compensation. And I just forgot about the stupid elementary tactic with knight b4. It's funny because I see this, right? I mean, obviously I see knight b4 coming. But I forgot that he can just do bishop takes, <laughs> bishop takes, and knight b4. But here, this is very accurate that you play knight c2 check pretty quickly, too. I mean, he took 12 seconds. That's much more accurate than trading queens first. And also this. And the computer says I should trade queens and play king d3, and somehow I can trap that. Yeah, that's actually true. I should trade queens because this way I could take away the c2 square and actually trap your knight for real. After this, it may not be that easy. Bishop here, maybe knight c2. King c2, bishop h2 check, king d3. But I'm just down a clear exchange, so it should be... Should be winning easily. I think you actually played fine, but you missed b5. B5 just wins completely, wins a piece. So at least here there's hope, and as the spectator suggested, knight takes a3 is better. Here, um, you're winning, but it's like the margin keeps getting smaller and smaller. I'm curious where it actually went over the edge. I still thought you're, you're probably winning. Here you had king d5, I thought. What's wrong with king d5? The engine suggesting knight g7. The point being that I didn't see knight g7, knight f5, and when you play rook takes g2, I have a fork on e3. Ooh, that's like a miracle. You played this. You're still better. You're still better. You're still better. And finally, I'm, I'm okay at this point. First time in the game when I was okay. I have enough compensation now, I'm like winning. Man. All right, dude, tough game. We'll be back on Sunday with a simul. Nice try there. Terrible to allow night before winning a rook, though. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll be back on Sunday. It was fun. Thanks for your support. I will uh, be playing a 25 board simul on Sunday here on Lee Chess at 6.30 p.m. CET. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing and for being part of the stream. Have a happy holiday season. And um, goodbye from our friend Panda. Have a great day. Oh, where's the camera? Hey, I'm a little drunk. Bye-bye. <laughs>